When you're getting started with chillers, it can be really intimidating to approach any machine. And where do you start? There's just so many things that look so much different. At the end of this video, you should fully understand my process and how I go about just getting started. What are my first things I look at when I approach a chiller? How you doing? I hope you're having a good day. I am Holden Schamberger with Chiller Academy. I specialize in chiller systems. We're gonna talk about that today. So these first couple of steps may sound a little corny, but I think it's really critical that we put some importance on this. My very first thing I wanna look at is what is the customer's complaint? What are they saying their problem is? What symptoms have they noticed that they're talking about? There's many times they may hear noises, sounds, or it may do things that aren't actual issues, but it can help us navigate, one, the customer's own knowledge or experience level, and then two, there could be small cues or little indicators that as we're troubleshooting and as we see what our data is, could help guide us in the right direction. The other big thing that listening to customers will do for you if this happened during certain conditions, so it's not that often that we always get to show up at the time of, or at the same day that things were happening. And well, weather tends to shift a lot. So there could have been a very specific condition happening at that time of trip. And even if the chiller has alarms in it, the time clock may not be accurate. And doing the math, the back date, what the time clock says that today is versus what it was then and like I've done that plenty of times but it's a pain so their feedback could give us an indication as to what kind of ambient conditions we were dealing with at the time there's all kinds of situations that come up especially if we're dealing with a really low load or maybe a really high load you know either way of that spectrum those two sides of it tend to pull a lot of issues in we're kind of in the middle where we're just the chiller is able to, to cruise that's where you have i'd say less issues overall anyway step one listen to the customer check the ambient step two i'm going to do a fast visual inspection i'm going to walk around the machine uh, just uh, what i'm looking for is does anything stand out to me do i have an excessive amount of oil on the ground do i have an excessive amount of oil residue is there a, a physical uh, damage that has taken place? You know, I've, you'd be surprised sometimes you walk up and we're dealing with very large amounts of refrigerant here and there's a lot of joints. And so you could literally have a just something that had cracked and it's just spraying. All right. Uh, that, that happens. So that visual inspection allows me to see that it also allows me to see kind of the overall condition especially if this is a chiller that i'm new to i haven't seen before uh, whether it be just not seeing that that model number or whether i haven't seen that particular one maybe i've worked on similar models but this is my first time touching this chiller every chiller is going to be a slightly different even if they're the same model to model so they because of the different installs manufacturing like there's a lot of things that will give them unique characteristics me doing that walk around just kind of helps me understand what different packages are there has any like if it's something i'm familiar with has something changed on that chiller has somebody else touched it you know the customer doesn't always tell you hey i know you've been working on this thing for the last five years but by the way i let somebody else come do this whatever for whatever reason, right? It doesn't matter why. The visual inspection can be an indicator towards that. It could also show anything blatantly obvious, especially the customer. Just They just may not know. They may not care. There's a lot of customers I've dealt with that it just they had too many other things going on. That wasn't their problem. That's why you're there. The other side of that is it gives me a chance to look at the alarms. So I want to see what are my alarm values, if I have any at all, or if there are any in the history. Uh, if there are, then that's going to influence kind of the direction I want to go. Um, but if there aren't, well, then now we just get into an analysis situation. And it's the if there's not any alarms part that the customer feedback could become even more critical. My step three is if I have an alarm, 
and if it's indicating something electrical based, then I can start moving that direction. Okay, if I have a motor overcurrent, if I uh, have a, a phase loss issue or a voltage imbalance or go down the list, right? If it's that direction, then we, we don't have to go to the extent of turning the chiller on, which that is part of step three for me is what is my alarms? Depending on the alarm, especially if it's electrical focused, then let's go that direction and make sure that there's not anything on. If, if, if you've got some overcurrent alarms, you, the first thing you shouldn't do is not turn the compressor on. Why? Well, there could be something going on in there that's causing that, and it may not have blown up all the other times, but that could be the, the time it does. So uh, you got to be careful because those starters, they can be dangerous, especially with the, the volume of current that we're dealing with with chillers. So say that there's not any alarms or the alarm that we're having is refrigerant based, whether it be a pressure, saturation issue, high pressure, something along those lines. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the chiller online so we can start taking our data. Step four, I'm going to dive into the data. I want to know what my water temps are and my load conditions. The water kind of helps you determine that. Uh, my saturations, my superheat values, suction and discharge superheats, getting the approach values, and then just listening to the sounds of the compressor. How does the, the tune, do you hear any kind of shifting, staging? You know, what is happening at the compressor level? Because that compressor can tell you a lot, especially as you get to understand and know the compressors better, you'll be able to pick up on those frequencies faster. But... Just listening to the shifts and the transitions and then having a basic understanding of how the different compressors stage. So if you haven't studied that yet, I would really recommend doing that. How does the staging sequence work for different types of compressors? Do you have scrolls, recips, screws, uh, or are you dealing with a centrifugal? Every one of those stages very differently. So look into that and then listen for that process as the chiller is coming on and as it's trying to, to capture meat set point leaving water set point that can be a really good indicator there's a lot of troubleshoots that i very quickly got to pinpoint issues just by hearing what was happening and then focusing on that or hearing what wasn't happening uh, uh, to give you an example uh a train rtaa a, recently done one of those that's fresh in the mind so train rta the first thing that should happen is it comes on and the female unloader is de-energized allowing a bypass well that compressor will have a slightly different tune if that female unloader is not kicking out now if say the compressor can come on and run for a couple of minutes then when it gets ready to load that female unloader coil will energize and it will close the internal bypass and allow refrigerant to flow through the compressor properly. So the first couple of minutes, I'm monitoring my amp draws, I'm trying to make sure that my saturations are doing okay, my superheat's doing okay, and then I wanna hear that hit where that coil gets activated, that uh, female unloader, the bypass valve closes and then the compressor begins to load up from there. If I don't hear that, then it takes literally just a couple of minutes for that sound. If I don't hear that, then I immediately know that I need to look into that. Why did the um, why did that not happen properly? So that's just where the the audible piece of this could really play into. Um, how it could benefit you. A much more simple version of that is the condenser fans. The condenser fans going out, especially let's say like bearings or if they have a really rough startup. So maybe you're having some high head pressure issues. You turn the chiller on, you get the compressors to ramp up and as you hear condenser fans turn on, uh, cause there'll be multiple, you'll get to hear the condition of them. Like if they just sound, just like crap when they turn on and you've got this 
loud kind of bearing noise or they kind of bang on instead of just turning on, you may have a fan issue. And just because that fan's spinning right now doesn't mean that in 30 minutes to an hour it's not going to get hot and lock up, trip out, shut down, over temp, internal temperature overload, whatever the case may be. So don't rule that out. Anyway, that is my step four. It is data analysis of just the basic stuff. I'm not diving off into anything crazy here. And these are parameters that are true for just about every machine out there. Some of them you have to take manually. Uh, some of these may be on the panel. So this is what I want to see. What What is my conditions during operation? And then my step five, I'm just, I'm going to dive and follow the trail from there. The readings themselves will have to tell me the rest. And I've got ideas to do videos on specific types of uh, chillers or just specific types of conditions. You know, how do we troubleshoot, say, low uh, pressure, low saturation, or a high pressure issue, a high current issue, low, low current issue, da 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 right? These are the things that we just, you have to start to hone in on. What looks outside of the the normal and then what conditions affect that particular reading. If it's something low pressure based, well, it's probably got something to do with the evaporator or maybe the compressor uh, loading and unloading, right? Uh, if it's something we see really high, high side pressures, uh, you can look at that by the saturations are elevated, uh, especially, you know, most machines are still running the uh, 20 to 30 degrees above ambient. And so you factor that in and you're pushing 40 degrees, right? So just figure out what doesn't look right. Keep it basic, keep it simple. A lot of the time, these troubleshoots and these chillers don't require some crazy left field, just all the complexity that can be there. It's just not always necessary. Lots of times you just focus on the basic thing, take care of the basics, and if you need to, then start to slowly work your way into the more complex. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If you really enjoyed this training and you want some more stuff like this, go to chilleracademy.com. I've got a whole program there where I can teach you chillers from the ground up and help you get far more comfortable with this topic and be successful in your career and come out fully versed in this side of the industry and in, the, in this specialty. With that, MTT, make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. I'll see you around.